Welcome back to uh, making deep diver wahoo lures. So in our last video, we talked about making this paper version. This is a, a 14 inch lure. And uh, from that, I made the cardboard outline so I can put that directly onto wood like this. So what I've done to this template is I have put in a center line based on where that red line goes. Now you may recall in a previous my previous video on this topic I was concerned about this area here being very very narrow so what I actually did this line here represents the the actual uh, outline of the lure and I increased the tail here a little bit and then that allowed me to move this line up a little bit which then allowed me to have a little bit of more material along here. So this is what the lure looks like after it's been cut out on the bandsaw. And I've added a very tiny amount of wood glue inside. Now, we have the channel. I think you can see that maybe. So when I split these apart, after it was cut, I put about a quarter inch, maybe a little bit more, of glue, very, very thin, on both sides of that channel, at the tail and about right here. Now the reason I did it right here is we're going to be cutting into this with the bandsaw in just a little while after it, it's, uh, the glue has set. And then uh, we'll come back and we'll do a number of things. Everything that needs to be done basically before we get going on the, on the table belt sander. So I have previously mentioned how important getting this edge correctly. The problem with doing that is you've got to kind of eyeball it. And let me, let me show you what I mean by that. So I've got the blank lure sitting on top of that paper copy. What I do is I line up the center line of the lure, tail and head, with that red line. Remember that red line I put on? Now what I've got to do is I've got to mark the angle of the bill. So how I do that is, I know you can't see this because this is uh, very almost impossible to show, what I do is I line up with the, ang with, with the edge of the bill. Remember I told you way back when, when you take a picture of a lure, always take it edge on? This is why. You have to line that up. And it, it takes a little bit of back and forth. And eventually you, you can do it. And then you put a line on your lure blank. So. What's going to happen next time you see this, this is going to have a hole chopped in its face that looks kind of like this. But this will be the absolute top of the plastic. So I've uh, changed the angle of the camera to help you understand how, in fact, I do this, um, cut this bill in. So what I've got is I've got three pieces of material from the material that will actually go into the bill itself. So this is quarter inch polycarbon. And of course all my samples I have several sizes so I make sure to, to mark them. So what I do to make the first cut is I know that this will be the first cut with the bandsaw. So then what I do is I line up one of these pieces and I put the other one on behind it and I mark that. And then after that's cut, I put the third piece on and I mark that. That's how 
I get the snug fit because I'm very, very careful about tolerances. Now, if I'm going to sand, I want to sand on this piece. Because this piece, um, this edge doesn't mean anything. It, it's, not, it's not the accuracy. It doesn't determine the accuracy. It's this edge that determines the accuracy right here. So after we chop this hole in there and we get these three pieces fitting just right, I'll take a, a moment out and um, show you what we've got. And then we can start to get ready for the tabletop belt sander. I'll put some marks just exactly like this, showing the, uh, the, the shoulders where the maximum width is, uh, the, the nose uh, width, this might be a little bit big, which is good, because you can always take wood off, it's harder to add it. Same for the tail. So these will be great sanding marks, and as I put them down onto the tabletop sander, you'll be able to see me working towards these lines. Now on the bottom here, uh, I always put a center line in, but lately I've been actually putting two parallel lines in as well, so you'll see that on this one. Now. As well, because this uh, blank is relatively flat and square, now is the time to put in, there's a lead hole here, because I want to take this thing apart and put a little bit of lead in there. How much? Got to calculate that. Um, and of course, the uh, I'm also going to drill this out with my long 3 16 drill. And that will be important because when we glue these people these pieces in, this is not made for this one, unfortunately, so it doesn't fit very well. Oh, maybe it does. Um, I'll be drilling through that hole that already exists through this plastic. And one of the uh, interesting parts of this build, without this hole here, you could not drill that hole through the plastic. It's at a very shallow angle and, and I defy you to drill from this side and hit that hole down below there. So this whole lure design is fundamentally based on the accuracy of that hole going through here and, and its ability to cut through this plastic. So what happens when you're, when you're cutting? So bear in mind, this will be glued in and when you're drilling, you wanna go very, very slow because you're going through wood that the wooden hole is actually holding the bit in place. So as you start it, the top of the bit will dig into the plastic and it will want to wander a little bit. So if you just jam it in there, it'll wander and you'd be surprised, it can wander off much as half a drill width to the right or to the left. Now, I can't always control that Sometimes it goes dead center, sometimes it doesn't. But if it doesn't, then uh, there's a channel along here. I don't know if I can show it to you on this one. It may not be apparent, but there's a channel right here that I cut into the, into the bill. And there's a reason for that. And the reason is I need to take this loop, push it all the way down, form the loop, and then push it all the way back to hide the wraparound. And I'll, I'll, I'll give you an example of a wraparound here. And so you've got this hole that's cut and it fills right up. In fact, it's, it's absolutely invisible. So I went to the bandsaw and I used my three little pieces to get me a really nice snug fit. And uh, you can see this is just perfect. You can tell by the way it sticks in there that it's, uh, it's just perfect. Now, as I said, when you actually glue the three pieces of, of the bill together, they do get a little bit wider. It's quite possible that I may have to sand a little bit along this bottom edge here. I have a little tiny sander that is just made for that, so I can certainly do that. And you can see the eye. Um, it seems that the, the top of this edge cuts right through the center of the eye, which is fine. That's, uh, that's consistent with all the uh, commercial lures. And um, 
So this, this came out very well. So one of the things I wanted to show you, of course, was the opening. Now I put this little kink in here just to add some square area for the glue to attach. So bear in mind, once I get the um, bill completed and assembled and glued together, it's going to have to fit into here. So we're going to fill this area with glue and then we're just going to go squeeze it in there. And there's going to be a glue everywhere. It's, it's just the way it is. And uh, um, it makes a very, very tight bond. And I wanted to show you the marks that I put on. These are sanding guides. So I've determined that this is the widest part of the lure right here. And we went through the calculation previously. And looking at this, I decided that the lead would be in this area here. So bear in mind, you're pouring in uh, molten lead. This uh, bill will already be installed and glued. So the last thing you want is that scorching hot lead to affect your glue. So you got to have some distance. So um, a finger width away, mm, that's okay. The other downside of that is you want the lead more to this side because as the lure is swimming, you want more of the weight to be down, forcing it down, not uh, back this way and where it'll have less effect. So uh, these are all things you have to take in mind and uh, sometimes you got to say, best I know is right there and then go with it. Now, one of the other things I wanted to show you is I've been talking about this great big drill. Here it is here. 3 16 drill. And I have drilled the back of this lure already. Now, you can see from the lay of the land here that when I put in the, uh, the plastic, be careful not to damage that, that master edge. You can kind of get the idea that this drill bit has to go through the plastic. And let's see if I just get that right. Yeah, that's about right. So if you can see that, you can see that tip just sticking out. Now the problem is on this end, there's only that much for the drill to hang on to. So um, that's why the 15 inch is so difficult because I can't drill through this plastic with this drill bit. If I had a longer one, probably, but I, I don't know of any readily available longer bits. There may be, but uh, I, don't, I don't know of them. So this is one of the challenges and um, we're basically ready now to start with the um, table belt sander got all the marks marked on here. This is the, uh, the lead hole, of course. This is the belly, belly loop. I talked about a wraparound, and this is what I was meaning about a wraparound. Uh, this will fit in here, and this wraparound has to go inside the hole. Now, we might have to do some interesting stuff here because um, the through wire will go like this. So what we'll be doing is making a loop to go around this through wire and that will hold this uh, belly loop from getting away. So uh, anyway, when we get there, uh, we'll, we'll make it work because it's worked before. So uh, just wanted you to see what I call a wraparound. I'm getting ready to uh, use the tabletop belt sander, but I want to mark the center of this eye. And on a normal lure, without this cut, I would just simply drill a little hole here. Possibly I could have done that here. Anyway, I had cut the hole. So what I have to do is I mark it right on this center line. Now this center line is extremely important. Do not sand that off because what you're going to do is you're going to install 
the bill in this slot here and the bill's going to have a line, a center line. And eventually what you're going to do is you're going to line up the center line on the lure and the center line on the lip or on the bill. Extremely important this line. You can get rid of any line that you want but you can't get rid of that one because that will literally make the lure work or it won't. So what you're going to see in a few minutes is me working on the edge of this face of this lure and in order to use the uh, sanding lines, the guidelines, you have to be able to see them. So I'm going to grind this side first. You see the red line right along here? And I'm going to grind that first. And then I'm going to turn the lure over and grind the other way. Because that's the only way I can see that line. So I'm going to uh, change the camera angle now. And uh, you'll be able to see this uh, from a little bit of a distance. This is uh, just starting the, uh, the grinding process. You're trying to ignore this hole, although you've got to be careful. You don't want to get the sanding belt caught in here and it'll flip it out of your hands. So the next uh, line we're going to grind to is these two lines here. Okay, you can kind of uh, see the grinding amount. There's a fair bit of wood been taken off. Next, we're going to go at the sides here. Normally, I would use two hands when I'm sanding. However, uh, I realize that one hand will get in the way of the camera. So, I'm trying to do as best I can. And I'll do what I can one-handed. And then I'm going to have to take a break uh, from, from filming and use both hands. Now you can see I've uh, again taken off quite a bit of material. I've still got lots more to go. But uh, you start gradually and uh, you try not to do anything too quick. So I'm going to start along this back here. And it's got a round over and I'm going to I'm going to cut it back and then I'm going to um, smooth out the cut. The cut will be flat and then it will smooth out so it goes from round uh, because this, this place here, right here where the shoulders are, that's the highest point on the lure and everything has to be brought back kind of that to, to that. So here I go. 